Hi, this is Dr. Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones. February is Heart Health Month, and this is a great time to talk about the bone health, heart health link. It's been long known that there is a close link between bone health and heart health, and that individuals with osteoporosis are more likely to develop heart health problems as they age than are individuals without osteoporosis. European studies, in fact, suggest that low bone mineral density is an important factor predicting future cardiovascular disease. A recent Canadian study also showed that adults diagnosed with heart failure had double the risk of fracture as compared to those without heart failure. Osteoporosis has at times been described as a situation where calcium leaves the bones and goes into the arteries. And in fact, there's a strong link between arterial calcification and severe osteoporosis. Here at the Center for Better Bones, I often see signs of arterial calcification on a client's bone density test. Today, we're really fortunate to have with us Dr. Stephen Masley, a Florida physician who has been building heart health amongst his patients for decades and who has just written a wonderfully informative book, The 30-Day Heart Health Tune-Up. The 30-Day Heart Tune-Up. Steve, this is a terrific book and I'm really pleased you can be with us today, especially to help us all see the links that there are between heart health and bone health. So welcome to the program and tell us about the bone health, heart health links. Well, I'm delighted to be here because you said it so beautifully. When we grow calcium in our arteries, that's coming from bones. And the last thing we want is calcium to shift from bones to heart because it gives us heart attack, stroke, um, but many other things. When you lose circulation, it impacts people's vitality, quality of life. Right, right, right. So, so we could actually call this the tune up your heart, your energy, your waistline, your sex life, and your bone health. I mean, that's really what this program's about. To buy the book, exactly. Oh, okay, tell us more. Well, we have five new food groups I'd like people to add, and I think you're going to really like these. Number one is most important is to add more fiber. Fiber, we get it from vegetables, fruits, beans, nuts. Um, it's great, They're, and they provide alkalinity for our bones. Right, but the nutri right. And the nutrients are awesome for our arteries. They make your artery dilate and increase your circulation um, when you eat those high fiber foods that are so good for us. Perfect. Two, in food group number two is healthy fat. Okay. This isn't a low fat diet, it's a healthy fat diet. I want people to add more olive oil, nuts, avocado, nut oils, avocado oil, things like that, seafood, because they lower inflammation. And they're all great for bones, so perfect. Yeah, so if we lower inflammation, you'll grow less plaque in your arteries. It's better for your brain, and it's great for your bones. Excellent. Number three is lean, not mean protein. So we need, bone, we need protein for our bones for collagen. Right, sure do. But when you add lean protein, especially like in the morning, like a protein shake, it revs your metabolism. It helps you burn calories. You feel full and satisfied. So more lean, not mean protein. Mean proteins like fatty dairy, fatty meats that are very inflammatory. Okay. Lean protein. Food, food group number four, beneficial beverages. Okay. Tell us about those. Yeah. So there's some beverages I want us to have every day. We need pure, clean water. It hydrates us. It flushes toxins out. It's wonderful. But, and if you like some caffeine, you know, your best source it would be green tea. Terrific. It decreases cardiovascular risk and it's good for your bones. Right. Very anti-inflammatory. Great, great. Good, good. Yeah, so I love more green tea. We should drink more of it. It's really good for blood pressure and associated with less heart attack risk, too. And then, um, along with that would be cocoa, like dark chocolate. Hey, that's good news. It's really good for your arteries. If you drink a cup of cocoa each day, it's good for your bones, for the alkalinity, right? Right, it can be helpful. But it also lowers blood pressure. It's great for our brain, and it decreases your cholesterol from being oxidized into plaque in your arteries. We like all those food groups. They fit well with the Better Bones program. Yeah. And then number five are fabulous flavors. Okay. We want our food to be delicious. But when you add spices and herbs and garlic in abundance and ginger, they lo again, they lower inflammation. So it's a very anion. So your food tastes better at the same time you lower your inflammation and slow aging body-wide. 
Perfect, perfect. So those are my five food groups. I want people to focus. And when they add those, when we've actually done studies in our clinic and we measured what predicts people growing plaque, and the most powerful predictors had to do with these foods. You know, they were like fiber, fitness. I know you're a fitness buff, so fitness was a much stronger predictor than, say, cholesterol. Cholesterol wasn't a very good predictor at all. And fitness is very important to predict bone health. So that's, yep, there's a lot of parallels between the program. For Fish health. oil and then some specific, there's specific food nutrients that I think are wonderful for our arteries and our heart that you'll like to hear for your bones too. Okay, which ones do you, which ones do you favor, Steve? Well, I, I put vitamin D, essential for all the receptors in your heart and your arteries. Perfect. You're vitamin D deficient, your blood pressure goes up and obviously you lose bone mass quickly. Very, very true. Number two is magnesium. Right, the great bone building nutrient. And we don't give enough credit to magnesium. You know, we talk about calcium a lot, which I think is important, but if you take calcium without magnesium, you risk having actually lowering your magnesium levels. It blocks absorption. And yes. most Yes, exactly. Most Americans are magnesium deficient. And magnesium it improves blood pressure, blood sugar control, it helps prevent cardiac arrhythmias. I mean, some people die from magnesium deficiency because of arrhythmias, let alone it causes migraines, right. constipation, muscle cramps, and bone loss. Yes, it's, so, a very, it's a very overlooked nutrient, extremely important to bone health as well as cardiac health. So we're right with you there in the magnesium. And then for your heart, we need vitamin K. One of our favorite bone nutrients. One of your favorites. I know you love vitamin K. You know, a, K1, K2, they're both good for our heart because they prevent the calcium. Without vitamin K, you know, the yeah. calcium goes from your bones to your arteries, and that's double bad. Right, and that's the, one of the big frontiers. That you should have all the nutrients and especially include right dose vitamin K, right dose vitamin D along with everything else. And then, you know, something else with zinc turned out to be very important. Uh -huh. You know, an important, I think, bone nutrient, but it has, and it has impacts blood sugar control. And the number one cause of heart disease is not high cholesterol. It's elevated blood sugar metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, is the number one predictor for plaque growth today. And so. it's such a common disorder. Zinc and all these nutrients can help. Very, very helpful. Very helpful. So those are we're looking in our clinic. We've done research on almost 150 patients who've shrunk their artery plaque by 10 percent. Their arteries are 10 years younger, and it's really focusing on adding healthy food, getting fit, and in adding these heart nutrients. There's a fourth factor, though, I think you'll love. Okay. And that's we have to manage our stress. Because if you don't manage stress, your cortisol goes up, and if you have high cortisol, you lose bone, and you grow more plaque in your arteries. Yeah, isn't it interesting how that all ties together? So really, all that we're saying is good for bone health, you're saying is good for heart health, and you've had decades of clinical work with hundreds of clients to prove this. Yeah, and we've got, we're publishing information now, it's being released and set up with meetings at the American Heart Association. The Mer I presented the last American College of Nutrition meeting some of my data on what predicts arterial plaque growth today on all these factors. Um, but here's what's not surprising. If something's good for your heart, it's going to be good for your bones, it'll be good for your brain, it'll be, you know, the body, we're an interconnected web. Yes, and isn't that, isn't that a great way to end because we forget that there's a great network of intelligence in the body and, and it's, every part is connected to every other part. And we've always said better bones, better body. What you do for your bones should be good for the whole body. And Dr. Masley's new book, The 30-Day Heart Tune-Up, shows you what's good for the heart and the same time is extremely good for bone. Stephen, thanks for being with us. We oh, thank you very much. appreciate your time and uh, wish you best luck with your new book and congratulate you on your research. It's really very impressive when you see a physician who's worked with so many clients building health and then come back to report the success of their programs. Thanks for encouraging us all, and we wish you a great new year. All right. Thank you. See you later, Steve. Bye-bye.